Sectioning bodies are the governing organizations that provide the rules and the competitive platform for the constructors and suppliers uh, to showcase their products but also test their products. So these arrows between the two denote a relationship between the two in which they both benefit, a mutually beneficial relationship. And of course, the sanctioning body would not exist if it didn't have constructors and suppliers providing uh, that motorsport vehicle uh, for the racing series to then govern and create rules. So we see this cross relationship in which the sanctioning body helps to determine the location the, uh, of the motorsport events. Uh, they try to make sure that everything's safe, both pr participants and spectat uh, spectators, uh, but also to make sure that uh, the competition is fair. Uh, so that's the role of the sanctioning body. Uh, the uh, automobile industry uses the sanctioning body uh, to promote the research and development, or R&D, essentially their new technologies. And so essentially, a sanctioning body provides an environment for the constructors to compete with each other and also test out their different um, uh, ideas. Uh, a key term we're going to introduce right now, and that's called a technology transfer, which we can find in various industries, but we can definitely see it here in this connection between the automobile industry and various racing series. A technology transfer is a process of moving promising research ideas and developments from innovation to more wide-scale production. So you've test out an idea like Michael Jordan. Sometimes you fail. That's okay. You know now you won't uh, fail again uh, with that with that idea. Uh, and so you use this environment to test out new ideas so that then eventually that idea can be uh, distributed to uh, a larger audience and uh, we can think of that as people will want to buy your car which the automobile industry absolutely adores. And so we see another quote, we're in racing, strictly for business. Competition success was the cheapest way of selling cars. And this is obviously from uh, the founder of Bentley, a ve very famous uh, a luxury, uh, high performance car manufacturer. We can also see the, the typical uh, quote that also can quickly summarize this is win on Sunday, sell on Monday. The idea that you're going to be able to test your product next to another one's. Fans are going to watch that. If you win, then that's going to help boost your sales for your particular product. Uh, and so we see this pretty much in motorsport. This is where it's extremely relevant. Um, where other sports, you know, maybe basketball, you test out new shoes, maybe kind of, sort of, uh, that might eventually reach to a mass market. But in the case of motorsport, you see that direct connection between the sport and the automobile industry. And once again, I'm going to go back to this particular graphic because it's a nice summary of these key stakeholders and we can find the regulation of the sport up there in the top left hand corner of this particular um, uh, uh, figure. Here's a famous example of a technology transfer. So Ray Haroon won the very first Indianapolis 500 uh, mile race in 1911. One of the things was uh, the other competitors had riding mechanics. And so essentially two people would go around the entire circuit uh, for that 500 miles. The other one uh, watching out uh, for, for other competitors, looking at the at the track surface, kind of being the more the, the passenger, making sure everything's okay while the driver, of course, steers uh, the vehicle. Uh, and so that adds extra weight. An extra person in the car is going to add extra weight. And so what Ray Haroon thought was, wow, I can put a mirror uh, up here on uh, – right above my steering wheel, right above my, uh, my, my, uh, my cockpit, and I can essentially uh, see everything that I will need to see that that riding mechanic would, would be able to see. So essentially he lightened the car by reducing the need for the riding, rider mechanic, and here technology transfer and innovation obviously becomes over time a mass uh, widely used product, the rear view mirror, which we can find in every single vehicle.